I did not sleep well the last three nights, so you guys are going to get what you get. Uh, it's, I don't know, is it, this isn't part of the sermon, not written down here, but do you guys kind of feel the mood is a little, do you feel that the energy is a little low? Are you guys having relatives over this evening for, and you're just kind of dreading it? Have you noticed how that's changed since Thanksgiving and, and Christmas past? Like, when I was a kid, we used to have neighbors going in and out all the time, and now when people show up unexpectedly at your door, we're all like commandos. <laughs> Did you call them? Don't touch that light! <laughs> the time, the, the, having people over, uh, keeping in touch with people around us is the single most important thing. Listen, I'm going to get back to that because that's not really where I wanted to start, but last week um, <clears throat> we were talking about some weird... English idioms. Uh, I, I, as I've probably told you a million times, I, I taught English in, in Italy. And the hardest things to teach were, were these phrases that we use in English all the time that we don't even think of, but for non-English speakers are totally nonsensical because an idiom by its nature has nothing to do with what it means. Uh, uh, turning a blind eye. Right? Do you guys know where that comes from? I know, you're thinking sitting, I was enjoying myself for just a split second, and now it's another history lesson. So, Horatio Nelson was a famous admiral in the British Navy, and he had been blinded in one of his eyes, and he's in this battle in 1801 in Copenhagen. And he's second in command, there's a, an admiral above him called Parker. Anyway, Parker thought they were losing the battle, so they used flags to signal, so he signals Nelson, disengage and pull back. And Nelson uh, picked up a telescope, put it up to his blind eye, and said, I don't see that signal, and then pressed the attack and won the day, turning a blind eye. Spilling the beans. This is a good one. I love this one. Spilling the beans. It means to reveal something you shouldn't have, right? All of a sudden. Back in ancient Greece, when they used to vote, they used to use white and black beans, and they would put them in a vase. White meant yes, black meant no, throw them in. And you were very careful not to knock the vase over because if you spilled the beans, people would be able to see where the voting was going. <laughs> Spilling the beans. Water off a duck's back. Now that was a little more obvious, right? Um, ducks spend an inordinate amount of time preening themselves. Have you noticed that? Like they, they'll fluff themselves up suddenly and then they'll just dig at themselves with their, with their beak. Do you guys know that they would actually drown if they didn't do that all the time? They have a gland, it's, and it exudes something called preening oil, and then they spread it all over their feathers so that when the rain comes, you got that wonderful beating that takes us with turtle wax like four hours on the car to get that effect, right? When it rains, it beads and runs off. Ducks just naturally do it, but they don't just naturally do it. They have to work at that over and over and over again. Why? What does this possibly have to do with our theme for today and the gospel passage. It has to do with Thanksgiving, and I'm going to link it back. Hopefully, because if not, this will be the most ridiculous sermon ever preached in the history of the world. Today we talk about Thanksgiving. We give thanks. Natural time of the year. All the harvests have come in. Especially when we used to be a mainly agrarian society, this was the single most important time of the year. And maybe the time you could relax for two days before you got ready for the winter and started chopping a million cords of wood. But we give thanks today, not simply for the blessings that we've been given. I'm going to tell you something that's very important for Christians to know. We are to give thanks all the time. Respond if you can. The Lord be with you. Uh, let us give thanks to the Lord. When you go back to the old prayer book, it is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto the Lord. At all times and in all places. And that means good days and bad days. Now you say, well, wait a minute. What if I'm just having, like I got the worst news from the doctor? I just found out my spouse of many years is leaving me. I just lost my job. I'm supposed to give thanks on those days. Yeah. Yes. 
Do you only work out on days you want to work out? If I worked out on days I only wanted to work out, I would never have worked out one day in my entire life. Working out, pardon me, sucks. <laughs> right? Dieting, equally, right? Not eating tasty stuff that you want to eat, KFC, chocolate, oh, all the time for every meal, I would do that. But you can't, well, obviously I do that. Uh, you can't do that. You have to abstain. But we don't give thanks all the time. It's when we win the lottery. It's when we don't get into that car accident. It's when that shadow on the x-ray comes back as just a shadow. And we walk out in the parking lot and we say, thank God. But I'm saying to give thanks on every single day. Because like that duck has to preen constantly, by giving thanks all the time. And there is always something to give thanks for. We lose sight in a, can in a country like Canada. I'm not saying you should feel guilty or bad for the country you live in. I'm not saying that at all. I'm simply saying you have to count the natural blessings you have around you. I have a phone in my pocket as we speak that's about 500 times more powerful than the computer that landed people on the moon. Fact. I've got a car out there that's more advanced than any car built anywhere in the world 50 years ago. I sleep on a mattress more comfortable than any mattress that any king of France ever slept on back in the golden age. I complain when we leave Walmart after spending $400 on groceries, two carts of groceries, or increasingly half a cart of groceries, on the way home because it takes so long to put it away. My day is ruined because I have so much food, it takes me an hour to put it away. I don't like cutting my lawn. I own a lawn. Do you see where I'm going with this? I look in the mirror. I go, who is that old man who replaced that slightly better looking young man I used to know? At least I'm alive to look in the mirror. And when we give thanks, that comes back to us, like working out, like dieting, it comes back to us in increased strength and a feeling of gratitude. Not a pretend feeling of gratitude. An actual growing sense of gratitude for everything. Because Christianity is not about God removing difficulties from our life. It really isn't. Sometimes miracles happen, don't get me wrong. But in the main, it's about you becoming spiritually strong enough that water of a duck's back, the difficulties of this world, will shed off of you. Because you are grateful for being alive. And you will float on the difficulties of the world as they come to you like a duck on water. Is this easy? It's not. Don't imagine for a second I'm standing up here telling you it's easy. It is not. But by giving thanks every single day, we get stronger and more grateful every day. And if you can be grateful on difficult days, legitimately, truly, to the bottom of your soul, grateful, what on God's green earth is going to break you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And then maybe it might be more fun to have people drop by suddenly, unexpectedly, on, on the holiday. Because everything else doesn't seem quite as monumental in our lives. And I think this gratitude is the thing that we also should give thanks for. It, it just feeds back and in upon itself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to finish. I'm not going to do a long sermon this Sunday, for which you can be truly grateful. <laughs> but I, I do, every once in a while I do this, and I mean this, is if there is someone in your life that... Uh, Especially Ottawa, I don't know why, but you know, you lose touch with friends, you lose touch with family. It's a big country. Um, if there's somebody that you've it's been passing through your mind but you have not talked to in years, or someone you might even be at odds with, call them. Call them today. Call them up. It is very, very rare when you call someone out of the blue like that that they'll go, What are you calling me for? More often than not, you'll get the opposite of that. So give that gift to yourself and to them. Reach out to people that you've lost touch with today. And share your thankfulness with them. Amen. Please stand.